Hello, and welcome again to a session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our service is uh, supported in part by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with uh, Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. We'll continue today and look uh, further into ovarian pathology, uh, looking at a very common uh, scenario. Uh, this case is not particularly a diagnostic challenge, but uh, does present some interesting points for discussion. The patient is a 62-year-old woman who had previously been noted to have uh, ovarian carcinoma and a prior biopsy, um, and then undergone several months of uh, treatment, uh, following which uh, a second look or debulking um, uh, procedure was carried out. Um, sometimes these tumors respond nicely and other times not so nicely. Uh, typically, uh, this particular tumor type can be fairly large and bulky, um, involving one or both ovaries. They can be uh, largely solid or have a mixture of solid and cystic areas and varying consistencies. Uh, very often there's fleshy, partly necrotic uh, tumor that may be present uh, under uh, gross examination. Uh, microscopically, this is a representative section. Um, frequently there's omental involvement, so there's usually no uh, dearth of uh, diagnostic tissue to work with, um, as uh, these debulking procedures will oftentimes review, <coughs> re remove uh, ovarian, uterine tissues, as well as uh, multiple sites uh, within the uh, peritoneal cavity uh, to attempt to uh, uh, reduce uh, uh, the residual tumor to uh, no visible residual. Uh, as you can see, this is a very blue tumor. It has sort of an anastomosing, wandering eyelid, islands of tumor uh, type of pattern with intervening uh, fibrovascular tissue, some areas of necrosis, as you can see here. Um, and so uh, that can account for some of the gross appearance that we will see sometimes in these tumors. Uh, the blue uh, tint to the sections indicates that there's a high uh, proportion of cells that are uh, have nuclear material, uh, and surely that's the case as these nuclei are enlarged, and we see their uh, fairly uh, coarse chromatin pattern. Uh, with probably lots of mitoses, some apoptotic bodies, uh, as you can see here as we look around at some of the uh, areas of this tumor. Here's uh, mitotic activity here and here. Um, a fairly monomorphous appearance to this tumor. Uh, it looks relatively undifferentiated. There's not particularly papillary architecture or anything of that nature uh, to provide uh, a uh, hint of uh, origin. Now, this uh, type of tumor in a woman uh, would virtually always be of a serous uh, type. Uh, it's unusual to have other uh, solid tumors that involve the peritoneum to this extent uh, and with this pattern. Um, that said, there can be other uh, morphologies that can be seen in this tumor uh, beyond this uh, solid uh, sheets and nests of cells with areas of necrosis. Uh, sometimes these tumors will have a recognizable uh, papillary pattern. And uh, can mimic um, low-grade uh, serous tumors. Uh, as you see here, uh, sort of an adenofibromatous pattern with uh, maybe areas uh, that at low power appear uh, borderline. Uh, however, we also note in this lesion uh, that there is some areas of necrosis, uh, which you would not expect in a borderline tumor. Um, and we may have some areas of uh, invasive uh, disease uh, evident here as well. Um, looking a little bit more closely, we can see that there's hemorrhage and necrosis, exfoliated cells, and there's a degree of atypia to these uh, cells that we do not usually associate with uh, borderline tumors. Uh, in fact, we see rather pronounced uh, pleomorphism, uh, 
uh, a few areas of microcyst, almost mucin type uh, differentiation. Uh, in some areas, some very large nuclei, such as this one here with adjacent mitoses. So this high level of uh, nuclear atypia is not compatible with a low-grade uh, serous tumor in most cases, um, especially not if we've got this necrosis. Uh, but uh, in reality, uh, ideally, you should uh, verify that this is indeed a serous morphology and high grade based pretty much on the presence or absence of a uh, p53 mutation. Um, as you may know, uh, p53 mutation, uh, that tumor suppressor uh, gene can be manifest uh, in both overexpression or the absence of expression of any uh, p53 antigenicity. Uh, but this gives you a nice view of these very high-grade uh, cells. Um, the occasional mucin droplet or blue uh, uh, in cytoplasmic uh, substance here should not dissuade you from uh, terming this a uh, uh, serous uh, tumor. So serous carcinoma is our most frequently encountered ovarian malignancy. And of the contrast between high and low grade, uh, certainly high grade is the most uh, frequently encountered in our practice. Uh, many uh, studies have been done uh, to attempt to elucidate the origin of this. Probably the most uh, credible are those uh, from uh, the Brigham and Women's Hospital, Dr. Crum and his group, uh, that have shown that uh, tubal neoplasia, uh, serous tubal intraepithelial neoplasia, is the probable precursor of this lesion. Um, but there are times when we found uh, no evidence of uh, tubal disease, and we still find uh, even uh, no evidence of ovarian disease, but may have uh, such a tumor uh, arising in a primary peritoneal site. Uh, so it may be that these uh, lesions uh, may arise from serous epithelium within the tube most frequently, uh, but can arise from endosalpingiosis or other uh, tubal epithelial type uh, implants uh, in other areas uh, within the uh, uh, peritoneal cavity. Uh, because of the uh, open nature of these, uh, bilateral involvement and peritoneal spread is very frequent. Even when there's no evidence of uh, surface involvement of the ovary. Uh, immunohistochemically, the uh, profile for high-grade serous carcinoma is quite characteristic. Uh, I've mentioned the p53 mutation, either as overexpression or the null phenotype. Uh, these tumors are also typically p16 positive in a very strong blocky uh, pattern. Um, indicating that there's a P16 mutation, uh, PAX8 positive, uh, WT1 positive, and uh, frequently ERPR positive as well. And uh, patients who carry the BRCA1 mutation uh, are also frequently found uh, when they have ovarian carcinoma to have this high-grade serous uh, phenotype. Um, <clears throat> and that's the rationale behind, uh, of course, uh, uh, oophorectomy, salpingectomy in those patients uh, as a prophylactic measure uh, to preclude um, high-grade serous neoplasia. Now, just in contrast, uh, here's the uh, involvement of a ovarian uh, surface. Here's the ovary here. And here's the involvement uh, of a surface uh, lesion, uh, actually in a patient with uh, serous carcinoma. Um, but as is evident here, uh, this is not high-grade uh, neoplasia. First of all, we see uh, fairly uniform uh, papillary structures. And looking at the epithelium here, we can see that it's uh, uh, much more low grade than that that we were seeing on the opposite side. We can still identify cilia. And while there is tufting and certainly enough uh, branching to merit the designation of borderline status, uh, there's no areas in this uh, neoplasm uh, that uh, come anywhere close to uh, high grade serous carcinoma. Uh, so just as a nice contrast between uh, the high-grade lesion that we saw moments ago. So in conclusion, our final sign-out diagnosis for today's case is serous carcinoma, high-grade, um, and uh, that would uh, uh, lead to fairly specific uh, treatment, uh, often involving adjuvant chemotherapy uh, with a combination of surgical resection and debulking. 
Um, and uh, oftentimes in that uh, setting, uh, especially with low stage disease, uh, a reasonable control can be obtained. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today for this uh, peering into the woods of uh, ovarian uh, neoplasia. Uh, we hope to continue to post uh, interesting cases, uh, provide uh, some opportunity to review some digital slides. We welcome your comments. Uh, either uh, make a comment below, subscribe to our channel, uh, or uh, send me a, a direct question uh, either via Twitter or email. We're always happy to respond. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time.